But let me turn to uh, Gonank uh, uh, now. Uh, so we've heard uh, quite a bit about the fact that uh, sustainability was uh, an economic goal that could meet, uh, uh, I mean, could come within the purview of competition. Um, is that also your feeling or do you think that sustainability is or should be recognized as a non-economic goal? And if so, should it be integrated into competition law in Turkey, for example? Um, Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Fred. Um, so I think that the very first thing to observe is going to be that um, the country by country, legislation by legislation analysis is going to be relaxed quite a bit if we can agree on whether the social nature of this particular goal, sustainability, uh, automatically qualifies it as non-economic or not. So if it is an economic goal, then actually uh, all competition laws around the world having an economic underpinning and some form of welfare maximization goal will be able to follow um, uh, the sustainability goals with more comfort. And I'm not doing a pragmatic interpretation, so I'm not saying to be able to say it's not a Turkey-specific analysis or a French-specific uh, analysis, let's interpret it this way. But actually, I think the answer is already embedded in uh, the uh, competition law uh, analysis and jurisprudence we have seen so far. So when you look at it from a purely an individual utility perspective, it is true that the social nature of the sustainability goal strikes one as something more uh, of a non-economic goal. But the individual utility perspective is not used that much in uh, competition law analysis anyway. So while it is intellectually very stimulating to argue um, the price top up due to depletion value, whether it is in the price or not, actually for a competition lawyer, uh, this is only a, a small subsegment of part of an analysis that we make in welfare maximization. So we're talking about distributive efficiency and in that, uh, uh, the pricing mechanism, whereas in the competition law jurisprudence and theory, we're already comfortable that there is also cost efficiency and dynamic efficiency. And as an overall goal, we uh, look into total welfare maximization. So rather than looking at it from an individual utility perspective, we can actually look at it from a social welfare uh, perspective. And uh, our uh, reflexes in competition law also support the idea that we should look at it from a process perspective rather than a snapshot perspective. So all competition lawyers are well learned that the competition in the markets should be viewed as a process. We know how to deal with processes. We know how to look at um, uh, not, a, not an isolated scene, but rather a continuum of uh, time period. Uh, we look into barriers to entry. We look into evolution of market shares. We know how to integrate time in our analysis. Now, sustainability goals are also demanding that we need to look into time and also take into account what we're uh, looking into, where we're heading. And regardless of what kind of an economic analysis uh, uh, you subscribe to, even uh, you know John Maynard Keynes kind of a of an approach where you really uh, are a monetarist uh, capitalist and you want to go for uh, fiscal uh, monetary stimulation goals, what have you. Uh, ultimately, uh, one thing holds to be true that the world is mandating on all human beings on it that. The human beings recognize that the sentence, we will all be dead in the long term, or in the long term, we'll all be dead, exactly as it is said, said by Keynes, is no longer valid. We'll all be dead in the midterm. And this time is shortening. While this is happening, we are trying to make sure that there is a chance of sustainable economic growth, a, a chance of sustainable um, addressing of issues at hand. So individual consumer might not be doing this particularly efficiently and particularly timely, and it is true that the individual consumer isn't doing it that way. Um, there is no reason why policymakers shouldn't or couldn't do it. 
policymakers uh, that hold policy preferences on behalf of totalities of societies can go beyond what is the added uh, total of each individual consumer's behavior. A, the social welfare, uh, welfare function is something different than the individual consumer uh, behavior. And uh, companies as well can look into sustainability matters, uh, companies being the subject of competition law matters, can look into sustainability matters uh, in a different way uh, and in a, in a way that is different than individual consumer behavior. And in that sense, uh, we would be then concentrating on not a narrow definition of distributive efficiency, but a broader social welfare approach. And this is something we know how to do as well. Um, Fred has used the example of privacy at the very beginning when he was discussing the matter, but I think it is unnecessarily making the sustainability goal an underdog. I wouldn't use the analogy with privacy. I would use the analogy with innovation. So in competition law, there could be more of an argument uh, that privacy goals are an, a different regulatory field and competition law is not equipped to deal with it. And that privacy goals are too soft to be recognized as economic goals. But how about innovation? I'm not saying that that's my position on privacy, but I could understand some people coming uh, from that perspective. But how about innovation? We have learned to integrate a dynamic efficiency as um, a, a um, very strong engine of efficiency and uh, welfare maximization through seeing that over time, innovation is helping the uh, human beings welfare function and it has a time effect as well. And uh, it is not as seconds. calculable. Yes, it is not as calculable. It is not as prominent in how you can feature in a given file, but we can touch it more and more as time passes by, and we are integrating it in our analyses. If we were to say that um, the sustainability goals are too soft and not are not directly related to uh, economical uh, welfare, uh, economical growth issues and welfare issues, then it is going to be quite puzzling uh, as to how we are integrating innovation because ultimately uh, the sustainability goals are also making sure that, um, that the uh, economical growth uh, patterns make sense. So in short, in, uh, as a last sentence, I would say that uh, there is very little doubt that while it has a social nature to it, this does not preclude uh, sustainability goals from being right in the heart of uh, economic uh, uh, goals of uh, competition law. To finish this, Gunak, uh, Gunank, uh, you have uh, five, five minutes uh, and then we will move on uh, to questions. So my question to you is, uh, do we need a change in the landscape? Do we need uh, a sustainability defense? So we need a change in approach, that's for sure, um, and it, we need to integrate uh, sustainability goals more candidly in competition law enforcement, but whether uh, recognizing a sustainability defense is enough or not is a different uh, discussion. It's a good start, you know, uh, in, in a given file, if there is room for a sustainability defense and if it is tangible enough, sure, surely competition authorities can and would recognize it, but I don't think it would be the luxury of any competition authority at the moment to say, if I were to receive that unique file where I can actually tangibly see a sustainability defense, then I'm going to recognize it. And knowing that, I'm, I'm happy with myself, so I'm just waiting for that file. Um, I think the matter at hand is way more urgent than that. Uh, which means that we need foreseeability. For foreseeability, we need leadership. For leadership, we need a public policy making willpower and uh, we need guidelines. So when um, leading authorities of the world were to take, or if they were to take the position that they can only come up with guidelines if they are, they are inundated with uh, uh, a lot of cases, um, that's just not going to cut it, basically. It's, it's, not, it's going to be poor timing. 
because we know from our experience, uh, all of us, be, be it private practitioners, judges, uh, um, enforcers, um, we know from practice that um, typically what happens is that a lot of ideas die and fizzle out, even without becoming something for fear of transaction costs, for fear of risks that are taken, and uh, they don't become something. Whereas in this arena, we want, we want the entities to be innovative. Uh, in the sustainability arena, we want entities to be proactive. We want them to uh, come up with solutions and, and approaches. For that, they need a, a landscape that is um, conducive to that kind of thinking. If they don't have that kind of a landscape, uh, i.e. if they don't have guidelines and the foreseeable uh, landscaping of what can be done and what cannot be done, what they will believe and what they have been believing is that the conventional tools of antitrust is going to haunt them and they, then they will have to defend themselves. Hopefully, because there is sustainability involved, people are going to believe that they're candid in what they're saying and that they're not using a carte blanche of, oh, sustainability environment, would you uh, buy that kind of a story uh, to not give me an administrative monetary fund? The nature of administrative agencies enforcing uh, antitrust law has not been one that trusts uh, private entities. I'm not criticizing that. Private entities may not have earned uh, that, that kind of uh, benefit of the doubt either. But uh, in the sustainability arena, if, if the entities were to assume the existence of that kind of a, a doubt about their true motives, their ulterior motives, their incentives, then they're not going to engage in uh, these practices that are collective uh, in, uh, in uh, handling the uh, environmental issues. Uh, it could be unilateral conduct, it could be uh, uh, conduct that contains duality, it could be unilateral conduct in the form of higher prices to cover environmental costs, it could be um, uh, making the purchase of one product from a dominant com a company conditional on the pro purchase of another en environmentally uh, friendly product, for example, um, sale of a printer conditional on the purchase of recyclable toner cartridges, for example, uh, or uh, a, a, an essential facility uh, or a ubiquitous product being denied to an entity that is going to use it uh, for, uh, for environmentally unfriendly purposes, what have you. But all of these, these will require guidelines and uh, in the absence of those, I think um, the defense is, is just going to give us a false uh, sense of having done something, whereas we will not have done what needs to be done. Okay, thank you very much. Call for guidelines and uh, Stanislas is working on them, so they are coming momentarily. Uh, uh, uh,